I think a lot of the problems that you have in relationships kind of go under the table or unsolved or resolved yeah. when you got money. You know what I'm saying? But when you when you going through that struggle, it's tough. they're not as, as cooperative or nice. Oh, yeah, it yeah. It seems like. It's tough. And that's why I tell men, listen, you got to talk like you got it already. To that, that's the only way you're gonna get the respect. You mm. can never, you can never think that you're going to get the same respect that you would if you have it. Mm. It'll never work that way. You know what I'm saying? Because we can only see what we can see. We can pretend like we see the future. We're really, but man, the present is so powerful. Mm. <laughs> you know, it's different when your light's going off and you telling, trying to tell somebody, "Yo, baby, just wait. It's gonna get better." The refrigerator ain't working. The food kids ain't eat food. They stomach hurting. They crying. It's 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 cr- the present is too powerful mm. to believe in the future. Yo, what's poppin'? You know what time it is? Your boy, Mr. J Hill, J Hill Podcast. I'm in the building. I got a special guest to my left. This guy right here is one of them. Listen, I, I know y'all might know him as this entrepreneurial guru. He helped people get businesses started. He help helped millionaires. Got over 100 millionaires under his belt. It's probably way more than that. It's probably like over 150 or something like that. 143. Uh, yeah, like close to 150. Hundreds, though. You know what I'm saying? You know it's in a triple digits making millionaires. Yeah. You know, turn 300 to 3 million. Like, yes, this, this is what y'all know him as. I'm going to tell you what I know this guy as. Come on. He's probably a marketing genius. This is what I know him as. And I want to get into this because this guy's crazy. You know I came with the heat, with the smoke. I came with the smoke and this thing is. But we're going to see. Come Mr. On. Keenan Williams is in a billion, a.k.a. Poppy Chulo. Come on. Dreaded is here. What up, Come dog? On. How's it going, family? Man, it's all, yes, it's all good, bro. First yes, of all, I, I don't even know. I, I guess for the people that don't know, that's that's that might be because um, you're new to my platform. Right. You've been doing your thing all over the internet, so everybody know. But for the people that don't know, uh, let me let the people know about what you do, how you got started, and things like that. Got you, um, Keenan Williams, y'all. You know, I started in 2018. You know, um, a beauty brand, a beauty brand that went crazy, took off, did three million this first year in business. But you know, obviously had to take those couple of L's. You know, went broke three times behind trying to get this shit locked down. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. To really try to figure this out. You know, um, and after that it was it went crazy. You know, um, I know we can get more into the story. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I guess like what, um, what? Because I got so many other things to talk about, but yeah. I don't want to do your story a disservice. Uh, and sometimes, like when you do your okay. research, you know things, yeah. and you just don't want to talk about those things because you already know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm, I'm gonna come at this as a novice. Like, okay, so got you. you. You, what made you start the beauty brand? Got you. So, um, my last job was Sketchers. You know, what I'm saying I had Sketchers. That was um, 2017. Um, you know, hardworking individuals such as you know, I'm pretty sure most men are. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Um, you know, I was coming off my lunch break. And my sister texted me in all caps, said, get to the hospital. Mama just had a stroke. Mm. You know, obviously I'm thinking that, you know, stroke either mean you live or die. You know Mm. what I mean? And that's my mama. That's my heart. So it was one of those scenarios. I'm out there crying, man. I'm in the back room crying. So I wipe my face, go tell my boss I need to go be by my mama's side. And, you know, he looked up slowly. He said, you know what day it is? I'm like, yeah. He said, Saturday. Go Mm. out there and sell some shoes. The busiest day. Mm. You feel me? And the thing is, that was my off day. Mm. I was taking somebody else's day. Because I was always the dude that you can depend on. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, bro, you called me to take this day a week a, a week ago. You you telling me that I can't <laughs> go see my mama? Mm. So after that, man, I just, you know what I'm saying, got up, left, went by my mama's side, trying to hear her say my name. She's slurring it and shit. It was one of those things that got me really frustrated. And said, listen, I always ask for one thing from every boss. Give me respect as a man. Mm. I understand we make different money. I, we got different wages. I get it, you know. But give me respect as a man, and I'll work my behind off for you. I could never get that from dudes. You know what I'm saying? They always disrespected me in the uh, in the long run. This was another and the last time I ever get disrespected. So that's me trying to figure out how to make money online at that point. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to find it. Try to sell t-shirts at first. Flop. Try to sell, you know, teeth whitening kits and other things like that. It was going okay for a while. Remember, I was coming from making $250 a week in my 9 to 5. At this point, when I started getting that, I'm doing 500 a week. But that was short-lived. The owners started to be a little creep. You know what I'm saying? Boom, the business um, shut down. Now I'm back out broke again, you know, started a, a different thing. This time I was in the beauty industry selling other people's products. That's what affiliate marketing is. Mm-hmm. I was affiliate marketing selling other people's products. 
um, they end up playing with my money for the last time. You know what I'm saying? Like, I put all my money in there that I had saved up. At this point, I'm a massive saver. You know what I'm saying? Like, my family, I took away birthdays, holidays from my yeah, kids. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We had to, you know, go on bare bones. They were tired of eating Wendy's um, Junior Bacon Cheeseburgers and stuff. You feel me? But I was saving the bread because I knew for a fact we had somewhere to go. You know? So at this point, I went. I transitioned from doing little to 1000 a week. 3000 a week. How sometimes. did you transition to, like... Get, get into that. I got you. So pretty much the beauty industry, that's when I realized how big it was, right? So remember I told you I tried to sell T-shirts. I ain't know how to brand. I mean, I didn't know how, I ain't know how to market. I only showed one shirt. So I'm like, damn, okay, that's went out there. Then I started the teeth whitening kit, so I already had somebody brand name on there. That went on, I, what I'm going to do? I didn't know how to brand. What year was this? This was 2017. I failed in months. Like okay, these are like okay. just a so few months. Same, okay, same year. Okay. Yeah. So I'm literally failing back to back because I'm not trying to stop. I understand. Oh shoot, that failed. Let me work at my nighttime job, get a little bread up. Da da da. You know, damn, that failed. Let me go. You know what I'm saying? I was always back to back with it because I understood that I never intended to get rich at the first thing I ever tried. Mm. I was coming in it from a logical standpoint and say I might have failures. Most people give up because they automatically assume that they're gonna just get rich the first time they do anything in life. Right. This is life. That ain't how it works. So I'm over here anticipating the failure. It still got me bummed out. You know what I'm saying? Because most people will be crying about getting scammed. Mm. Imagine believing in yourself and you lose. Mm. That's a whole different mental thing that you got to go through. So it was one of those scenarios. Nah, nah. Need to keep on doing this, you know? Boom. And then when I got into the beauty skincare side of things, selling products for other people, bro, I started to see more money because I realized the demand was there. Women mm. wanted products to make them feel beautiful and look beautiful or whatever. So I'm like, ooh, this is where it's at. I was able to save sixty to eighty thousand dollars, but then put all that money into one bad campaign. You know what I'm saying? Lost all of it. Mm, they mm -hmm. told me they couldn't give me my money back. I'm like, yo, what am I supposed to do? Tell this woman that I just married. You know what I'm saying? That I told her we ain't gonna go broke no more, and look what just happened. You know mm. what I'm saying? And this is this is still 2017. This is all. This is 2017 going into 2018. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So 2018 or whatever the case is, that's when I started my business. You know what I'm saying? Like 20, 2018. I went crazy, you know what I mean? And this was around, so 2017 going into 2018, this is around August when I started my actual business. So August is when I started my actual skincare company for myself. Because mm -hmm. after I went broke again, I had to put the pieces, pieces back together, you know? I only had $300 left from my Skechers paycheck. Remember, I told you, this is in the span of months of failing. Mm -hmm. And every time I was going up and down and going broke, I was moving to a rental place, now I got to move back to the projects. Get into a nice crib, got to move back to the projects. Because I had an incident where I was in the projects taking the trash out one day, and dudes tried to rob me at gunpoint. They see me take a TV upstairs, a pawn shop TV, $60 yeah, TV. Yeah. You know, the lady was like, yo, bring your gun with you. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, man, I'm just taking out trash or whatever case is. She said, I, I seen three people that I think I think they up to no good. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, all right, whatever. So I bring my gun downstairs. We got gravel on the um, concrete, you know what I'm saying? Plus, inside the dumpsters, you got that mirror that faces outwards. Yeah, yep. mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, seen this, hey, sh sure shit, we seen those three people, you know what I'm saying? Masked up and everything, running up to me. They gun up, my gun up at this point. I'm being extra loud. Whatever you gonna do, you gonna do it here. But obviously, I'm scared as hell, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Try not to piss myself, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, yo, I don't wanna die. I got a daughter. I don't wanna turn her into a statistic, you know what I'm saying? And, it, bro, it was it turned into, like, a five-minute thing that felt like five hours. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? People on their balconies were recording. They ain't even trying to call no police. I'm like, boy, I'm in hell right now. I'm in Section 8. They over here just went and see a murder so they can go post it on social media. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. They end up backing off because they realized I wasn't taking them upstairs because I know what time it is. You're going to probably try to kill all of us. You know what I'm saying? Take you upstairs. And my wife at that time had a kid. You know what I'm saying? A four-year-old son. I'm like... I'm not going to put them in that position. You know what I'm saying? If you're going to do whatever, we're going to have to do it down here. Mm. And at that point, it was really get richer die trying. So that's when I had to overdrive, figure this thing out overnight. And that's when I started doing a little bit, moved out. I had to move back to the hood when they started going down. Mm. Moved out. So my mind was always on some, those same people could be looking for me. I just hope they going to catch me while I'm by myself. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Because you know, <clears throat> she ain't got nothing to do with this. It's just some money-hungry niggas that's in the hood. That's, you know, that we like to do, do what we do to each other. Yo, hold up. So, you was with the same lady, the same girl the whole time? Yeah. Yo, how was that on y'all relationship? Like, I know this is probably different, but, like, yeah. I'm a man, so I know how it go when it comes to, like, just money, money come, money go. It was like, tough. Like, you having to move, move back. How was that? It was tough. You know what I'm saying? Because I kept on promising it ain't never going to happen again. And then you got a family in the air. You need to leave that nigga. He unstable. Da, da, da. You know what I'm saying? He need to just get a regular job. 
Like, I had a regular job. You know what I'm saying? I was a, one of the hardest working people. I had three jobs my whole life since 16 years old. Daytime, nighttime, on the weekend, I'm doing something on Craigslist. Temp service. I'm out there with Mexicans in the early in the morning. I'm doing whatever I can to keep money in my pocket because I never wanted to feel like I was $0 broke. You know what I'm saying? So it was tough, bro, because, you know, she she got to deal with loving me and listening to her family that she had loved. You know what I'm saying? Tell tell stuff about me. You feel mm-hmm. me? Like, that's the type of dude that, that ain't going to do you no good. You know what I mean? All types of stuff, bro. So it was it was tough. You know what I mean? Like, we endured. You know what I mean? And, and we here now. How, how did y'all, like, what you think helped y'all stay together the whole time? Um, I guess it was a shorty. She seen, like, a confidence in my eyes. Like, I ain't going to stop. And I told her. I, I, I told her. I said, listen, see, this a homeless. I'm going to put everything into this. We ain't never living with nobody. We ain't never staying with nobody. We're never going to be that down to the point where now we got to, you know what I'm saying, be the people that beg somebody for this. I would never be that. I've always been a proud man. You know what I'm saying? Nobody ever know my struggles. People won't know my struggles until I'm out of them. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like, I keep it, I, I hold it down. That's just what my father taught me. He said, son, you know what I'm saying? Us as men, we bury and we move. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like, we just, you know, we bury all that hurt or whatever the case is. Obviously, you know, that's just the times we grew up in before mental health became, like, super serious and yeah. everything. You know what I mean? Like, it was like, yo, taking in the chin. And that's what I've been doing. And she'd seen that a shorty in my eyes, like, yo, he ain't going to stop until we get some paper. He ain't going to stop until we get rich. He didn't done, he done said all this and that. I'm over here, bro. We used to drive the Nissan through the rich neighborhoods looking at all the nice houses and stuff. You know what I'm saying? People never bothered, bothered us because they thought you we were the people wife. that cleaned up. Yeah. Wow. And we over here picking out the houses and stuff. We used to go to model homes, had the kids going to pick out your bedroom, whatever the case is. Because she had a four-year-old son. I had a four-year-old daughter. So as, as they get older, whatever the case is, pick out your bedroom. Run upstairs. Just, like, got to really see it. You know what I'm saying? That's what we did every single weekend. Mm. Yeah. Damn, bro. That's that's phenomenal, bro. Because usually you don't hear that story from, not to make this a woman versus man thing, but, like, you know, man, I think a lot of the problems that you have in relationships kind of go under the table or unsolved or resolved yeah. when you got money. You know what I'm saying? But when you're when you going through that struggle, it's tough. they're not as, as cooperative or nice. Oh, yeah, it yeah. It seems like. It's tough. And that's why I tell men, listen, you got to talk like you got it already. To that, that's the only way you got to get the respect. You mm. can never, you can never think that you're going to get the same respect that you would if you have it. Mm. It'll never work that way. You know what I'm saying? Because we can only see what we can see. We can pretend like we see the future. We're really, but man, the present is so powerful. Mm. <laughs> you know, it's different when your light's going off and you telling, try to tell somebody, "Yo, baby, just wait. It's gonna get better." The refrigerator ain't working. The food kids ain't eat food. They stomach hurting. They crying. It's 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 cr- the present is too powerful mm. to believe in the future. Mm-hmm. You know, so you got to have something in the present that shows you moving. That's why I tell dudes, stay by yourself. Don't get with no woman right now. You need a game plan. You need a blueprint. You know, you can present that if you feel like you're ready, but get some stableness ground underneath you. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? No sense of both. But yo, struggles. even in that moment, I mean, that's real. I, I believe that too. But like, you ain't go through that. Right, yeah. like you had somebody that was by your side, and who's who's to say she could have been the, the I don't want to say motivation, but she could have been that little push that you needed in those moments of, of hardship and those moments of adversity, and, 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 and when 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 shit ain't going right. No, one hundred percent. That's why I took away that job from her early on. Like the thing is, remember I told you I had three jobs my whole life, so me I was preparing to be with a woman. I stayed single for two years, stacked my paper up, so when I was actually with a woman, I'd be able to do more than the average man could. You know what I'm saying for a woman. So I was already ready for that new relationship that I had in. I said, "Yo, what's your bills look like?" Da 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 da. Okay, cool. Boom, move in with me. You know what I'm saying? We're gonna dissolve a lot of these situations that you don't need no more. Be with me. Mm-hmm. I want you to get off that job. I don't want nobody to talk to you like that. I don't want nobody to actually, you know what I'm saying? Da, da, da. Like, let me take care of you. I asked my ex this same thing. She told me, hell nah, I can't trust no man. My mama told me never trust no man to take care of you, whatever. You know what I'm saying? They're going to control you. I'm like, I ain't got much now, but you think of it, you know what I'm saying? Like, but I do have enough to, to take you off your job, you know what I'm saying? So I can focus on what I need to focus on. Because I tell people all the time, at that point, the responsibility becomes you. Mm. A woman who don't have to have a nine to five. Like, we don't even be want to work a job. So why would they want to? Mm-hmm. You know, and you want them to still clean sex and all that other good stuff. Like, nah, what about you take that job away? Now, the responsibility, because dudes say, yo, what's the real responsibilities? You. Mm. Mine dedicated everything to making sure this mental good, my, my spirit good, making sure I felt like a king when I'm coming back into that little Section 8 apartment. Like, 
all that was necessary, like you said, to get to where we at now. So mm. she was those steps, but I took some away from her first. I prepared for. Her. You know, it's crazy because I even bro, in a, cause I'm, I'm gonna get to all of the yeah this shit, but it's like right now we having a, a real conversation. It's crazy because um, you really gotta talk to somebody like you to really understand it. But not even that. A lot of things that women or people, not even just women, people don't understand is who she was to you. Yeah. Right. Like. You was able to take something away from her, but she gave, she poured into you. 100%. From my experience, again, man, like, I'm not saying it don't go like that, but it's not always the case, right? right? Like, because sometimes you have people out here who who just aren't happy with what they have, right? You might have been with the, she might have been okay with, okay, you know what? I come and stay in the Section 8 crib. You know what I'm trying to say? And I'm going to pour into him because now I don't have no bills. But it'd be some pe- woman that that's just still not satisfied. Like, I needed to be what I just told my homegirl. I feel like a lot of women want to be with the guy who, what, he, what the guy's going to be, they want to be with him yeah. instead of who he is now and working towards getting with that guy, Right. if that makes sense. No, no, so no. she was able to come with you and like enduring your struggles and still pouring to you. Yeah, we can see that online. Like, yeah, I want to do that. But if you do that for the wrong woman, you could set yourself back years. 100%. That's why I tell dudes it's all about discernment. You know what I'm saying? I say, mm-hmm. listen, once you choose that lady, that's the one you chose, you know mm. what I'm saying? And it's responsibility to come with what we choose, you know what I'm saying? Like, just like it was back in the day, like if we operated by back in the day, you know, standards or whatever the case is, those dudes used to have to go work for the father's hand for that girl, um, hand in marriage or whatever the case is. Like certain things, if we really said, yo, I chose, I choose you to be with me, for me to be your leader, you know, that comes with certain responsibilities that we are supposed to do automatically. Like, we, we ain't sit over there and ask a woman, are you going to cook clean for mm-hmm. me and, and, you know what I'm saying, Give me provide me that sex or whatever? Like, same thing, they ain't, they expecting us to take care of them. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? It's the same exact thing. So we got to have that mindset and say, okay, I'm now I got to use my discernment. I got to find out if this is the woman for me. Mm-hmm. I tell people all the time, like, first thing you need to be saying on date one, you need to get into it. You know what I'm saying? Get into the shit as far as like, yo, are you tired? Mm-hmm. That'll throw a woman off. What you mean I'm not tired? Are you tired of the games? Are you tired of playing around? Are you tired of, you know what I'm saying, going in and out of these little microwave relationships, these washing machine relationships? I'm looking for something real, and I'm looking for something I can build with today. Mm. You talk to a woman that direct and that real, change their whole mindset. You know what I'm saying? And I tell dudes all the time, try to take them outside of their comfort zone. Try to take them outside of the town a little bit. Go drive 40 minutes away. You don't want to take her to the favorite spot that this other nigga done took her to. Or she looking over her back and look, damn, this is where Tony hang out at. I want to make sure this nigga ain't out here looking for me. He might bust this nigga in the head. He see me with him. Like, nah, take him out of that area. Let him get vulnerable enough for you to even say that. You're going to open up a whole new side of a woman to the point where you're going to know exactly if that's the woman for you or not. Mm. Dudes can cut down a lot of time if they're being real and direct with a woman. Cut all that cute shit out. Mm. Because most people tired as hell, especially if you over 25 dating. Man, women be tired as hell. They done been through the games. We done been been through the games or whatever case is. Dudes get cheated on just like women do. That's why we be so hurt when we say, I want to do this for the wrong person. I understand. Because I know how that hurt feels. I I was the person who got cheated on. You know what I'm saying? Like back in the day, I had to to deal with it. That still didn't change my mindset on women because I know it's way more than one woman. Mm. And what one woman don't appreciate, the next will. And if that woman appreciated it and end up not appreciated, it, the next will appreciate it even more. Mm. So you're only going to level up. So there's really no lo- loss in this because mm. you're just displaying your skills in front of the world and everybody know what you're coming with now. Yo, this is crazy, man. We turned up real fast. Hold up. <laughs> what I will say is this is why niggas like you are dangerous, bro, <laughs> because you make a lot of sense. Come on. I love what you're saying. Like, I don't disagree with it. However... Bro, we live in a microwavable society right now. Mm-hmm. So when you go on the internet and be like, man, he don't love you if he ain't paying all your bills, it's like, I think that puts the battery in a chick back to lead with that, right? I was just on a, I was just on a, my podcast with my homegirl, and, and she was like, and, and for me, it's unfortunate, right? Yeah. But I feel like guys like you are fueling this. <laughs> yeah, but when true. I'm listening to you, you really don't. So <laughs> I, I'm going to explain. I'm going to explain. Yeah. So on a podcast, she, she like, she's dating this guy. He's really good. She really like him. But... In order for her, in order for him to be her man, he got to be able to pay all her bills because she's tired. And I'm like, bro, that don't make no sense. Like, mm. like I understand wanting to provide for a woman for sure, yeah. but that shouldn't be the leading factor. Right. But when I go on your, your your Instagram and that's like, man, he don't love you. It's easy for a woman to be like, nah, you got to do this for me to let you be my man. And there's so many things before we get there. Come on. 
Come on. That's what I think. Okay, okay. And, and I tell dudes, I tell dudes all the time, I'm like, listen, now you got to open up why that woman's saying that. You know what I'm saying? Because if she's willing to do that, I tell men they need to have just as many standards as women have. You know what I'm saying? But the problem is we don't come in there with standards. We just see a nice body. Oh, shit, I, I want you. Because I see you. Yeah. I see Keenan on Instagram saying, yo, you need to be paying this. So I don't you, I don't, I don't see you talking about my standards. I see you talk. I see you, what they say, pandering to the woman saying, yo, uh-huh. you got to do this, you got to do this. So where my standards at? I tell people all the time, like, listen, if you if people pay attention to my movements, I'm like, yo, this is the standards of a man. A man should have these standards. It's what you require from this woman. I require her to be a queen. I, I, I require her to give me everything that I need to go out there and succeed, right? And I always say... What a woman can give you, no man can. You can't, you can't have no man whispering in your ear. It's like back in the day, right? Kings used to be scared as shit to go to war because they didn't want to die. Mm. But that woman lay down, give them the same, the, that certain type of sex that they need, whisper in confidence. their ear, come, come back to me. Man, that man going out there suiting up, cutting off heads, naming the damn village that he just conquered after her. Mm. Like, baby, I just got you a village or whatever the case is. That's only something a woman can do. Mm. So if you can, if if you, I tell men, you got to become him first. Mm. It's a whole thing. Become him first, and then everything will make sense after. Because now a woman will understand your standards without you even having to say something. Like, damn, I can't just. He ain't Tyrone. I can't just do him like, t- like Taco Bell Tony. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta come at him different. I gotta, I'm gonna do this because I always say we can get different versions out of a woman. Right? Like, if we look in at certain situations, Sierra and Future didn't work out, right? I mean, we've seen all the craziness they had, but Sierra and Russell Wilson seem like the perfect couple mm. because a woman can be a whole different woman with another dude because this dude is him. Mm-hmm. He come with him standards. Yeah. He know who he is. He's strong in his faith. You know what I'm saying? He's already settled in his career. He ain't out here confused as hell because most of us dudes be confused as shit. We don't know what we want to do tomorrow, today, whatever. We, we want we want to be players one day. We want to be, you know, sanctified men one day. Like, we don't know. But a man that actually is walking in his purpose, that's what a woman looking at is him and she gonna turn up. But that right there, bro. Come on. We don't see that on... I'm not trying... Not, like, what you saying right now, yeah. I'm not arguing. It, it makes sense. It, you on... You going... You going crazy right now. Yeah. You ain't saying that on Instagram. Oh, nah. They got to lead into the conversation. <laughs> That's you why I me? say you're a marketing <laughs> hey, Look, I want men to, to feel upset. You know what I'm saying? Because for mm. one, we, we get results with strong emotion. For sure. So if dude's like, what the, what the hell he talking about? They tap in on live where I got two hour long form content where I can just sit over there and break this thing down like I'm talking to you. They always be like, oh, I see. I see. <laughs> because I lead them in. I want you to, because we know for a fact if they just hearing something, well, you need to be this and this and this. They ain't trying to hear that shit. It just sound like regular Instagram stuff. But if I'm saying this is what they need to be doing for you. The dudes is getting pissed. Facts. But yeah. now they want to know because they want to they want to hear me long term. What this nigga talk about? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they jump in the live with the energy. Mm-hmm. But when they lead the live, they be like, damn, this nigga ain't said nothing wrong. Cause I'm I'm You're only saying wrong. I'm only saying what I believe that will make us better. For sure. Like, bro, us taking care of women will make us better as men. Like well, we will be the powerful. I want to go back to him though. Come on. Because I feel like a lot of people, because I was one of those guys. And, and I'm talking from my 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 younger self, right? Yeah, for sure. Bro, looking at your video, if I don't go into your long form content, of course that's on me, right? Yeah. Of course, but yeah, yeah. I'm just saying for the younger men. Yeah, I'm chasing that, bro. And now I believe that him being him has a dollar amount, and that's not true. That's the opposite of it. Okay, okay. you got to be him to get the dollar amount. Him is everything before you even get the dollar. It's about who you are, like you said, that confidence, that right. that 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 sternness, that 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 power 100%. within yourself, that being a king. Hundred percent. But as a young man, right? Yeah. I'm looking at your videos and, and I, I understand this because I've been through it. Yeah. I'm chasing to be able to take care of my woman 100% because I'm thinking that's going to that's gonna uh, resolve all my issues with my with my lady. Come and on. that's totally not it. And that's what I want to, um, those are the type of men that I want to listen to me even deeper. Mm. Because we know we got a whole section of men that don't give a damn about women. Mm. They use them as restrooms. They don't care about them. But these people, daughters, I got two daughters. Mm. So that changed my whole mindset on things. When you got kids, when I literally, I got a 14-year-old daughter. She adores me. She cooked for me. She clean up for me. Like, this is my baby. And mm. I'm like, yo, I would never have a nigga treat you how I know these niggas be talking about how they treat women. Mm. Just because I got a daughter now. So now I'm responsible. You know what I'm saying? So now I have, 
I have a duty to talk to women, you know what I'm saying, in a certain way of saying what you need to be looking for in a dude. Because mm. that's only going to make us better if we're chasing that. Because mm. men always say, what, what, what do women bring to the table? Everything that we don't have. Facts. Everything that we don't have. And 100%. we need that shit. But we will never be 100% of a man, you know what I'm saying? Until we're providing 100%, we can't call ourselves 100% of a man. Mm. Because now we're operating 50% of that money going somewhere. We, strip club, jewelry. It's going somewhere that's not benefiting your last name. Mm. So you're not even operating and being a man. That's being a boy at that point. Because what you're not doing for your kingdom, it's not doing nothing for you. It's falling to the wayside. Mm. So we got to step out and say, listen, I'm doing this. And that's why I want to piss people off. If I piss you off, you're going to listen. Mm -hmm. You know, you might not listen the first time, might try to turn me off, but you're going to hear that shit go viral somewhere else. And you're going to be like, man, what the hell this nigga talking about? I need to argue with this nigga. I need to find out why, why he say the shit he say. Mm. All I want to do is peak curiosity. Mm. Why the hell this nigga said this? You tap in, you be like, ah, shit. Because it's everything that we need to hear in today's time. Mm. I'm tired of seeing men begging. I got more men begging me than women. Bro, you need to fly me out, bro. Help me out, man. I don't want you to talk, uh, teach me the game. Bro, listen, listen, man. I ain't got nothing, man, but give me a hands up. Help a brother. We got to come out here and want to be helped ourselves. Mm. We got to want to do this shit ourselves. And I can't, and that's why I say, him can be a development process because a lot of people, they grow into him. I know at, fir at first, I felt like I had all the makings to be him, but I had to go through certain things to understand what it was. I wasn't him until I got cheated on the first time and left. You know what I'm saying? And then me saying, damn, I still kept my same characteristics, me being the same man, now I'm him. Because mm. I proved something, you know what I'm saying? That that shit didn't jade me. Now I'm over here, I ain't treating women like damn garbage cans and shit. Because mm. I realized, like, shit, we come from women. Nah, facts. And I think, uh, that I think one thing that we don't have as men is it comes with confidence, but it's really loving yourself. Yeah. But loving yourself is so many other things, right? It starts with loving yourself, but it comes with boundaries. Yeah. It comes with having confidence. I feel like when you don't love yourself, you you allow a woman to do things or put you in situations that you don't want to be in. And now you look at yourself like, man, why should I do that? And you change. Yeah. Right? So when you talk about being him, when when I the first thing I hear is when my woman cheated on me, I left. Mm. Being able to set your own boundaries and saying I'm not going, I'm not going to go for something that I that I'm not okay with. Yeah, a lot of men aren't like that, and I say that because I was one of them. Yeah. Right, like you, like I feel like we have this Superman complex, so we try and try and try, and when things don't go wrong, we always look at ourselves in the mirror and say, you know what, what did I do wrong that I could fix? 100%. Okay, I'm gonna do that. Accountability. And you keep, you, yeah, and you keep, but at the same time, you gotta learn. I'm my mom's is old, so she told me old soul shit like Kenny Rogers. You know, no one to hold, no one to fold, no one to walk away. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. But a lot of <laughs> men. We're steady trying to be accountable. Yeah. That we're over accounting for things that we just that we need to set our boundaries for, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. Boundaries is super important, bro. You know? And like I said, man, like you only displaying to the world exactly who you are. Come you know on. what I'm saying? This is a constant marketing campaign. Like, mm. yo, baby girl, if you don't like this, somebody else is loving this shit. Mm. Somebody else is sitting there and saying, if I had a chance, mm. I'm going to turn all the way up for this man. You think he rich now, he'll be even richer with me. Mm. They're watching. <clears throat> so that should keep people on the toes. Competition is healthy. Mm. It's supposed to be happening. You know what I'm saying? Like, I want people, I want my wife to look and say, oh, shit, my man, I see these, nah, nah, let me see, you know what I mean? Like, because that's just healthy right now. You know what I'm saying? You see that you in demand. You know what I mean? And that's only going to make that person do more. Vice versa. You know what I'm saying? You know what you got at home. You know mm -hmm. what she did for you mentally and spiritually. So you want to turn that up as well. You know what I mean? Like, bro, this, this need to be... We, it's just about some togetherness shit that right. we don't have in today's time. We go against each other. This shit look like the little rascals. Dudes be like, boy, girls ill. Boys ill. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, then... It ain't clicking how it used to be or whatever the case is. Cause now everybody scared to everybody's scared of everything. Dudes scared to provide 100% because they don't want to get cheated on. Mm. Girls scared of letting the dude buy, provide 100% because they don't want to be controlled. Mm. It's just narrative set by weak little people that had the privilege to have money. Mm. That's crazy. So okay, how did you <clears throat> your skincare line? Like how did how did it go to millionaire status? Bro, it was so funny. So, you know. We did everything bare bones. I said people complain. Women complain me to my first million dollars. One thing I learned about women early on, they love to be listened to. You know what I'm saying? So when I first got my first sale out there marketing with influencers and everything, you know what I mean? I thought it was up from there. You know, people started complaining. Like, the label's cricket and shit on here. That's because I had $2.97 spray glue 
from Walmart. You know what I'm saying? Like I did everything bare bones. I didn't know nothing about no printers or this and that and getting it done here. I only had three hundred dollars to work with. Like I really only had three hundred dollars. You know, I know most niggas be lying and shit, but I really only had that. Like about hundred and twenty dollars worth of products. I had two two dollar ninety seven spray glue from um, Walmart. I went to the library to print out labels on the um, printing sheet. Got the other stuff done on Fiverr. Like, literally, I'm out here trying to make it happen. Paid $20, $40 for my first influencer. And when I got those sales, man, like, people was complaining and saying, oh, my God, you need to fix this. And I said, okay, I fixed it. You know what I'm saying? In real time. So people seen it on the page. They're like, damn, they listen. Da-da-da. Everything they had complained about, I fixed it in real time. And it made them buy from me more. Mm. Because now they realizing, oh, oh. They don't know it's a man running it. But it's that male energy of that, everything that they wanted. They just wanted somebody to listen to them. So I'm like, shit, I'm over here doing that exactly what y'all said. Because y'all the customers. I don't know shit about what I'm doing 100%. Because it's my first time in business. I didn't even get an LLC until my second month in business. Because I didn't even know you needed an LLC. Like, this is all brand new information. That's mm-hmm. why I tell people, like, I'm what you call an out-the-mudpreneur. I didn't know nothing about business. I figured out everything on my own. Went broke three times behind it to prove it. You know what I'm so saying? So why did you? I'm, I'm like, why, why I go that route? Of course, you you had somebody, and then like you invested some bread and it didn't go well. But what made you do the skincare? Go to the Walmart? Like I'm trying to understand because if you don't know that, yeah, like what did you even learn that from? So on Instagram. A couple of influencers, like the people that we know today that's Insta celebrities, like okay. far as the Insta comedians or the people that's, you know, doing something like... Yeah, like I, Desi Bangs, like a day... All them people, yeah, you know yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, Judy yeah. with ha, ha, Miracle funny. Drops, you okay. know, Super Scent. Like, I came up with them. We was all in the group together okay. when we were just growing our followers. Back in the day, it was easier to grow followers, you know what I'm saying? I was always a handsome-ass dude, so I had female following. You know, I had a heavy female following. You know, at that point, 60,000 followers was a big deal back yeah, then. Yeah, yeah. You know, so we all sharing each other, whatever the case is, and, and now everybody got put on a wave. Nobody want to put me on a wave because we thinking the money ain't that, ain't that much out here. But that's when they was doing affiliate marketing. Okay. It was like, yeah, we promoting different things or whatever. They had this cheetah link back in the day when people used to post it. Like, are you getting cheated on? Fill out this form, whatever. They paid us $12 every time somebody filled that form out. So we started making money doing that. You know what I mean? And then it just gradually got to the skincare. Because I'm like, okay, where are they getting money? You know, where are they putting that money into? Let me try a different campaign. You got like a thousand things to choose from. Luckily, I chose the right thing to pique my interest. Mm. And that's how I knew it would work if I do my own thing, you know? Because mm. the company was taking care of me. They was flying me out to the to their events and stuff, you know, getting me sections with them or whatever the case is. Like, the owner, rock star, walking there, leather jackets, kissing pe- kissing different women in the mouth. I see, I'm like, damn, this is a whole different lifestyle that they living down here, you know? And it just showed me, like, oh, shoot. And my brother always told me, he said, bro, if they taking care of you like this, imagine, imagine how much, much you're making. Yeah. Off, you know, off of you. Mm-hmm. I never cared because I'm like, bro, I'm doing a thousand dollars a week, nigga. Oh, we can eat it. Aha, uh-huh. I can eat it. Red lobster, you know, in my yeah. head, that's like a privilege. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? I'm like, I come from making two hundred fifty a week. Like, I'm like, yo, bro, like, I'm good. And plus, they said if I start a business, I might get sued because of this and that. I got to make sure the ingredients. You know what I mean? Things I didn't care about until they play with my money. Then I said, fuck it, I got to see one way or another. And that's when I started my own business. Yo, you know it's crazy because like I remember back in those days we used to make fun of the guys that did affiliate marketing, the, the uh, Wake Up Now, even before Wake Up Now, the the Vector Knobs, the uh, yeah. it was a lot of things that was like affiliate marketing. Yeah, and we made fun of. But every time I talk to somebody that's like in his entrepreneurship space, they went through the 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 yeah. affiliate marketing <laughs> wave. Like talking <laughs> to David Shannon, he was like, "Yeah, man, I was selling knobs." I'm like, I should have, I should have just. I should have been. I should have been selling my Lord. You feel me? Because it's gonna teach you. It taught you a lot. It taught you a lot about running a business before you ran one. You Facts. know what I'm saying? So, it, it was a great stepping stone. So, yo, how did you? Better. So, I'm still. How did it go to a million? I got you. So, after I started making my first couple of sales, I put that money back in the business, and then back in the business. Like Remember? what? So, back into products and marketing. You know okay. what I'm saying? So, I bought more products. And I put all that money back into marketing. What made you? Know, how did you know that, bro? I went broke three times behind this shit, so I didn't want to go broke ever again. And plus, I was so concerned about money. That's I, that's why I believe I went broke all those other times. So I said I ain't even gonna give, give a damn about the bread. I'm only paying my bills out of this money. We ain't gonna live on no expensive ass lifestyle. We gonna be hustling. I didn't look at my money at all when I started my business. I didn't look at after I seen that first week. I'm like, this shit say twelve hundred dollars. I'm up. I'm working my ass off. Every dollar went back in the business. Mm. So if I know twenty thousand was made, twenty thousand going back in the business. You know what I'm saying? I didn't look until I was at my first three hundred thousand. When I looked at my, when I was like, "What the?" F-? You know, I lost my mind, started crying and shit, thanking God. You know what I mean? 
And then the next time I looked after that, I was at 1.2 million. That's six months later. You know, mm. that's why I made a million in f- my first five months. But it was 1.2 in that six month mark because I ain't checked since then. I just know I started off shipping one garbage bag worth of products. Now I got 30 garbage bags worth of products. And this is going to people. Like, this is business to customer, customer yeah, at bro. this point. Yeah, bro. So I'm taking it right up to the post office, dropping them off. At first, I was doing it one by one. I was in the post office. as They scanning one package yep. by one. Yep. And I got 103 packages with me. So everybody in line pissed because mm-hmm. I'm taking up all the line. They had to tell me, you know, well, what you what platform you use? I'm like, I use Shopify. They're like, you know you can print the labels out at home and just have us pick this up. I'm like, for real? Bruh, everything was bell bones, bro. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So what made you go into like, yo, helping businesses do this? I mean, that's a smart bro, thing to do, but... 100%. Nah, it was to the point where I got a lot of free game on my page. If you go look early on when I had my braces, all I'm doing is telling people what's going on. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, hey, guys, this is how you need to have this. I believe this is key right here. Have this first. Mentally, you got to be ready for this. You know what I'm saying? Just giving out game. But then it started getting excessive where I'm having an hour-long conversation with people, you know what I'm saying? And all my damn day is going to waste, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like, because they'll listen and come back for another hour. Yeah, facts. But I got, well, shit, at that time I got hundreds of people asking me about this business shit, you know what I'm saying? Because I still didn't let them know, like, yo, this is me running this brand, you know what I'm saying? But they knew for a fact I was getting to it. So I'm like, bro, I got to create a program or something, you know, somewhere I can service all these people at once. And plus, I was curious to see if I can make somebody successful. Mm. You know, it was one of those ego plays where I'm like, shit, if I got rich, what they'll say about me if I get somebody else rich? Because, mm. you know, achieving this shit is amazing, right? But you still don't feel like the man. You don't. Like, I don't care who, who, who anybody say. You can say you made a, make somebody else a millionaire. That's when you that nigga. You know what mm. I'm saying? And that was my mindset. Once I touched it, I was happy as hell. I felt grateful. I was blessed. But I didn't feel like him yet when it came to the business world. I'm like, nah, something else got to give. Let me help somebody. And, bro, shoot, I started that thing. Ten months later, created my first millionaire. That's mm-hmm. how quick it was. Literally, he showed $100,000 in the first three months. In our industry is, you already know, once you start smell blood, you go even harder. Yeah. They know to put all that money back in the business. That helps money grow quicker. And we always price our products at a certain price, right? So I always got two $40 pro- um, products and one $60 product. So three products in total. I call that the trifecta combo. That's $140 value. We slash $40 off there, women saving $40. They're getting that $100 combo every single time. Now we already know our numbers. If we sell 10 of these, that's 1,000. We sell 100, that's 10,000. We sell 1,000, that's 100,000. We sell 10,000, we're millionaires. Mm. That was the method, that's the game plan, that's what people follow, and that's why people go crazy because they realize we don't think about it in the money aspect. We think about it in order aspect. We just trying to get the orders. And once you're working with the right people and everything, it makes it go even crazier, bro. So when I created my first millionaire, he flew me to Miami, you know, had a section, turned up, had a sign, you know, million dollars in sales, pure little shot to Mike Kimbrough, you know what I'm saying? And we we turned up, bro. I gotta ask you this, bro. I'm I'm just inquisitive. So was was it a million dollars profit or it was just million dollars? It was a million dollars in sales, but our numbers. Our profit margins are retarded, bro. Like, literally 85, 90% profit margins, higher in almost any industry. We're buying products for 2 to $3, selling it for 40 to $60. Mm. And then we're hitting them on the head for the 15, um, $15 priority shipping. Because, you know, Amazon fucked up the game with the next day shipping. Yeah. So we'll make free shipping three to seven days. Nobody don't want that. Yeah. Two to three days business shipping, $15. They're paying that $15. So that's taking care of product cost and shipping. So we're making 100% of every single dollar that we sell. Mm. So that's why I was able to buy my house in the second year of my business. You know what I'm saying? People are like, nah, what the hell? How much is the profit margin? I know because y'all see the people on Shark Tank. They over here say they did $3 million, but they only netted 300000 I did my first year when I did that $3 million, I brought home two point four of that. Mm. We make crazy-ass amount of money. E-commerce is like the best industry, lowest overhead, highest profit margins if you sell it for actual prices. Can't go out here with this flea market pricing. Like, when I first started, people said I was crazy because we was used to flea market, two for five, all that. I'm like, nah, I'm going to sell it for 40 to 60. They were like, you crazy, nobody going to buy it. I said, listen, it's a saying, if you're the best, they don't expect you to be the cheapest. Mm. And if you're the cheapest, they damn sure don't expect you to be the best. Mm. So I charge what I know for a fact women will run to. Women will run to quality, right, versus something else that they can get what in this. What type of, like, Care, skincare is this like? It's like stretch mark creams for them when they finish getting pregnant. How did you get that though? Like, Say you like, what I, you mean? I, I, because it, I'm assuming there's a science to this. Like, this is chemicals. Like, 
Oh, yeah. At I, first, I ordered products overseas. I'm seeing all the results on it and everything. Remember, I was okay. in affiliate marketing, so I was already selling those products for somebody else. Okay. So I said, I need to find my own. You know what I'm saying? I'm seeing the reviews. I'm like, okay, people going to love this. So as I ordered it, ran a couple months of doing that, then I said, screw it. I got to actually switch my own formula. You know what I'm saying? I got to have my own thing because I want natural products. You know, chemical products can break people out. And you know for a fact, you you woman scars or whatever case it is, they put on their stomach, it hurt the baby, now you're getting sued. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, so I I always go for natural ingredients. You know what I'm saying? That's why I produce the products now. You know what I mean? Made a deal with the manufacturer, like, listen, I want to produce these products. Cost me a million dollars to um to do the custom formulation over time. But when we got it done, now I got the best ingredients ever. That's why I have an 85 return customer rate. A 85% return customer rate is almost highest in any in industry mm. because I stand behind my ingredients. Like where where it used to cost me two to three dollars, it cost me seven to ten dollars now. Mm. You know, so you would think that it eat up in the profits, but it really don't since my profit margin is so retarded. Yeah. You know, and I control all the variables now. I got a fulfillment center, got a manufacturing company. I chop things down now based off of me having all that in my you know what I'm saying my hemisphere. Damn, sheesh, that's crazy. Do you uh, you, do you stand in front of your 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 your, your business like do I'm people a, know faceless brand? Okay, so people don't know like the name or nothing like uh, that. The name KLS is me and my wife name Keenan Olivia Alexis. You know what I'm saying? That's something I drew up on a napkin. You know but they said so they can find you then. Yeah, they can find me for sure. They just all they gotta do is Google me. I'm just saying it's not my face ain't on the products. Oh like, yeah, 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 okay, like, okay, yeah, yeah, You know, like because you always want to make yourself synonymous to your brand. You don't want to put your face out there because somebody who hates your ass from school can hate on your brand. Yeah, fact. you know. And now you got that whole thing going on. And plus this. This industry treacherous, bro. Like, people want your spot. So they'll blackmail you. They'll send their customers to hate on you, say all types of stuff about your brands. It happens like that. So uh, your brand's in, like, stores and everything, though? Nah, I, I keep my stuff online, and I got it in a couple of beauty supply stores and salons. When you go to talk about, like, Walmart and Target, I could have been put my stuff in there. But you got to remember, those are entities. They play by a different set of rules. They're going to want you to change your pricing mm. from 40 to 60 to 29 dollars Okay. Because you got to match the other stuff that's in there. And plus, you're responsible for the theft to replace those products. Mm. And you know for a fact that somebody seen you on the internet, they want it for 100 and they see it as $20, they're snatching that all yeah. day long. I got yeah. plenty of partners who got their products in stores. It's a flex until you see the money. I don't care about the flex. I care about the money. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, I would rather have been rich than famous. I just realized for me to be a person of authority, for people to even tap in with my programs and stuff, I had to become the Fine. face. Yeah, but I yeah. was fine. I was at six million. That's why I tell people, like, it ain't no situation where I was coaching and I made this money from coaching when people be asking. I was already at $6 million before I even started coaching at all. So I was been making money. You know what I'm saying? I just stared out there and said, all right, y'all, I'm going to teach y'all. So let's go into the coaching, man. Come on. I mean, you know, we, we see stuff on the internet. 100%. How, how you dealing with the, the whole scam rumors and people putting 100%. out videos? Like, I, first of all, before we get into how you deal with it, let's get it. How does that... How does that come about? How does the, the notion of somebody feel like they're being scammed by you come about? Um, you got you got a couple things, right? People don't want to do the work, right? You know, people will fantasize about this and think it's going to be some abracadabra, I ain't got to do no work, this shit going to pop up. I'm like, at what part of my journey have I shown anybody that this shit is just going to be handed to us? Every year I was saying, okay, I did this. I moved this. I do this. Certain people want to skip steps. They don't want to do no work. You know what I'm saying? So remember, the word that's been easier to say in the last three or four years when it comes to anybody coaching is scam. Mm -hmm. but, oh, yeah. I, 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 I think I everybody probably had somebody say, like, everybody. You feel me? Yeah. Oh, oh, I'm lazy. Oh, you scam me. Da -da -da. But the thing is about me, I step in front of that shit. I bring people up on live. One of my first viral videos was a person who said I was scamming. Then I pulled my millionaire out there, and my next millionaire said that, and my next millionaire, and they go crazy about me. So they showing the numbers when they first started, what they did, they, and they tell them, nigga, you just lazy. You ain't like us for real. And that's what I tell people. I'm like, listen, I got I got a millionaire for every person that ever called me a scam. Mm. I, I, if it's thousands, I got thousands of people that being able to quit their nine to five. Mm. You just gonna have two sides of the coin, unfortunately, because you know some people ain't going they ain't got it in them. They ain't got that dog in them like us. Like, we're willing to be here working. I asked you earlier, you said, I'm here working. Yeah. People ain't like that. You know that. They'd yeah. they, they rather take vacations. Yeah. They'd rather go work a nine to five for the rest of their life, making $8, $10, $12 an hour, and complain about the wages versus come out here and do something about it. Mm. So it takes a certain type of person. Like, I would rather die than be broke. Mm. Like, I always say, like, what am I doing here? I got depressed when my life is just a cycle that I can predict. Mm. Go to work, go home, go to the club. Go to work, go home, go to the club, go to work, come on. That shit would drive me crazy. It drove me crazy when that was my life. 
said, now nah, I need to do something different. I can't, oh, Lord, why am I here? If this is all, if this is it, like in the Bible, you talk about a whole different president. God favors the entrepreneurs in the mm-hmm. Bible. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. He put gold on the planet in Genesis. And we don't want to get none of it, even though he put it here for us. Mm. But somehow that's why I don't teach my kids slavery and shit. You know what I'm saying? Because that shit will play a pl- part in everything we do. We never think that we're good enough to do anything in life. Mm. What about, I mean, what? some people say, like, you should know, though. Right? You don't have to teach it to them for them to, to, like, dwell on it, but at least for them to understand the world, though. Right? Because, yeah. like, think about it. If you if they don't understand slavery, they don't understand uh, crookedness. If they don't understand evil, they, can't, they, they won't be able to see it and maneuver through it. I always say it's good and bad. You know what I'm saying? Slavery and racism put a whole different spin on it because now it requires us to act, to be proactive versus reactive. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? So now we more extra with it versus just being on some, let me play it smooth. It's all about awareness. For, for one, like, you know, uh, that Tyreek Hill situation, it's about awareness. You see all that crazy, you you out there, man, nigga, 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 hey, do your job. Rolling your window halfway down, being extra crazy, and then you recording the part where now you're on the ground or whatever the case is. When you know for a fact, if you would have diffused the situation, you would have been on your way. I think game. that comes, so me personally, I per my first act, I, I, so of course, some of that is entitlement, money, yeah. right? But another part of that is being unaware. Like you said, right? I think, if he was not him, I was taught that make it home. Yeah, make it home right? by any means. But if you're so you say you, you don't teach him racism, slavery. If I if I don't know racism exists, I I would see somebody act like Tyreek because I don't know that this could happen. This could happen from my actions. Not saying it's okay, but because I understand what can happen from my actions, I'm gonna be okay. I'm gonna roll. The, even if you're wrong, I'm gonna roll the window down. But what okay. about if you just being a good person? Like you just understand that people just doing their job. Like oh hey officer, but banging oh, on the window because the officer was wrong. Banging yeah. on the window. It's not him just doing his job. But because I understand he's looking for a moment, he, he want to make it a dick measuring contest. I'm not going to give him that. I'm not going to give him a reason to do what I know he can do because I know from history that that police officers kill black people, people that look like me. So because I know that, mm-hmm. even though he's not doing his job, I'm not about to challenge it. I, I see you on the flip side. That's how I look at it. How many police officers we got in our family, though? You know, we be having plenty of them, whatever the case is. So we already know it's good cops and bad cops, right? Mm. Just like it's um good people and bad people of all colors. You know what I'm saying? I know a nigga right now who will kill everybody, who will kill all of us. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. like it's good people and bad people in almost every situation. And that's what I pretty much teach my kids. Like, yo, it's good people, bad people. But the moment they start thinking that they was ever held down, this and that. Like, now we're, we, us as black people... We hold our name in the same name as poverty, and we love that shit. Mm. Like, when Neiman Marcus said, yo, if you make less than $200,000 a year, we don't want you shopping in our store. Why is it that black people said, oh, y'all just don't want black people to shop? Wait, don't fucking, wait, no, no, we ain't all broke. Mm -hmm. We ain't all making less than $200,000. Some of us got our shit together. Some of us want to get our shit together, so we're not going to connect ourselves with poverty. Why we got to be the first ones to jump out there? You know, oh, no, you just don't want us to shop in there because we ain't making that money. Mm-hmm. Like, we don't need to be proud of that. We proud of everything else. But why we're not proud on the economic growth versus systemic racism? We know we can't do shit about it. We didn't even experience it like they did back in the day. We need to be moving on to think and teach our kids, hey, move on past this. Don't even dwell on this because that's trauma. Like, I'm from Montgomery, Alabama, originally, right? And I tell people... People field trips was probably to Washington D.C. and shit. Yeah, yeah. My field trips was to plantations. Yeah, my looking family, at yeah. lacerations on the tree where niggas got hung. That's traumatizing. Mm. I don't want to pass that out to my kids and make them think they was less than. Like my fourteen and fifteen year old, they had to see life for what it was, right? But my five and two year old, they grew up in the house. You know what I'm saying? My five year old, he came along when two months later I made him up my first million dollars. So he's seen progression. My two-year-old, she she didn't have maids and butlers since she was two. We stay in the five million dollar mansion, so she knows that lifestyle. Sweetest thing ever, nice to everybody, this and that, because now they have a different you know, point of view in life. Mm. Now they're more happier. They call my son Mr. Smiles because he always smiling. He always happy. I love you. Walk up to like it's just a different level in life. Because now we're not putting that trauma on them, you know what I'm saying? Versus, hey, you walk down the street, you can get your ass killed. You know that, right? Hey, you know if this police, they're supposed to protect and serve and this and that. You know he's he really looking to murder you. We putting that shit in our kid's head, not even saying decipher from people to people, mm. person to person. If you give people nice ass and energy, that shit is infectious. It will turn the most, oh, I hate this nigga. Oh, damn, no, no, no. Because remember, people are only learning, to, learning about us from news yeah, and what we portray. Because we know who's putting that dollar behind, oh, I'm going to murder your ass, I'm going to shoot your ass, I'm going to shoot you in the head. We know who's putting the dollars behind that. Mm. So they're only seeing that so they don't know about us. 
just like we have a certain you know no notion on them. Yeah. You know, we we go in the airport, we see people with turbans on their head, we get a little, what's going on? You know what I'm saying? Like the same thing they do. They clutch their purses because that's what they've seen on TV. Mm. And it's ignorant for sure. And I guess I got what you're saying is makes sense. And even the whole um dynamic of like being from Alabama and yet filters being the plantations, that can mess up a a, a kid's brain and, and make them think that there's nothing past this. Yeah. Me coming from Baltimore, I understand that. Yeah. I guess, just like you said, it's different people, but, like, why not teach that but also teach it's different people? Like, cause just because your kids don't have to learn about plantations how you learned about it, yeah. but they can learn about it, I guess. And yeah. this is not me saying you're doing wrong. I'm just challenging the mindset of not teaching them about slavery. Like, 100%. they can learn about slavery, but not from the mentality of you can't be anything because this, right? Because, like, just like you said, is it when, when Neiman, Neiman Marcus said they don't want nobody shopping in that store that uh that don't make more than two hundred thousand dollars? Yeah, two hundred thousand dollars. It's a group of black people who's complaining, but it's also a group of black people who's saying, "Well, make more money then." Yeah, right. So yeah, why can't why can't it be that way? Right? Because I believe it's that su- um, that up that subconscious thing that slavery does to our people. That's why they push it every year. It does something to us subconsciously. A lot of black people can't look white people in their eyes. They can't. We hold our heads down still. We think that having a white voice is the best voice versus just being articulate in the voice that God gave. Because that's what we taught, though. Exactly. Now we teach. You see, you see what I'm saying? That's what we were taught. So we keep going off of what we were taught versus let's switch this up a little bit. What happens if you tell your kids you, they from royalty? You know what I'm saying? Or oh, we from royalty. That's why we got all this. That's why we working so hard. You know what I'm saying? We come from a great royal background or whatever the case is and leave it there. Your kids are going to come out here and think they can do anything another kid of another culture can do. Now they out here with all the, you know, feeling and, you know, I can do this and that. I'm going to do this and that. I'm going to do this and that. And not thinking they're going to get held back by their skin. You know, it's too many of us saying, you know, that you just still a nigga. Mm-hmm. People say it all the time. They be like, you got money, but you're still a nigga. I'm like, I challenge that. I've been in too many places, white, black, Indian, whatever. We just take, we take a, a yearly $10,000 cruise. Everybody on there paid the same amount of money. All our kids playing with each other. Not one hint of racism. Not one hint of, not one hint of that token black person friend thing. Mm-hmm. Nah, people respect wealth and where you climb to. And I always tell people, let me take on all that racism for y'all. Cause I've been able to turn so many people around mentally about us by them meeting me and how I carry myself. I've been hearing them say things like, oh my God, your people are not that bad. I don't get offended to that. Cause they only seen what they seen. Mm. They, you should be the leader of your people. Oh my God, you guys are amazing. That's because we're giving them a different point of view versus being on a tight time based off of the slavery movie that just came out last year. And what you looking at, you know what I'm saying? Like versus, now nah, I'm going to judge everybody where they are and I'm still try to work with around that. You know, some of us, we got to do the work to change people's point of view of it or another change. We'll mm-hmm. always be at war with people that never been through that shit either. Mm-hmm. They ain't been through that shit, you know what I'm saying? Like literally one more generation, <laughs> nobody has ever seen slavery. Mm. It ain't gonna be no more great, 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 great grand people that's alive and shit. Like, all that's gonna be dead. Like, it's only gonna be what we was taught versus, hey, this is a new age. White kids are playing with black kids. They got best friends. You know what I'm saying? We playing with everybody. Like, now that's only something that we keep up, that we mm. wanna produce. But what has it done for us? I always ask people, well, how has it benefited you in life? What your life look like knowing all this shit that we know? Mm. Are you held back or are you progressing more than ever? Mm. Nine times out of 10, they always say, held back. I guess because I do look at somebody that's progressing more than ever, and I understand. Like my mom's, like my mom's is heavy in drug addiction, but that didn't make me right. Like I, like right. when I came up, people always be like, "Man, you're a product of your environment." Like I'm not a product of my environment. Facts. Like I'm, I'm a, uh, I came from there, but I'm not of it. You right. know what I'm saying? And what that means is, like, yeah, I can recognize that I had struggles. I, I've been through some things, but that didn't make me. That didn't, that didn't, uh, because I was that. That didn't, I didn't have to be who who the projects created. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, but but because I understand that, I still have compassion and understanding of people who who go through that and I can talk to them. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I feel like if I didn't have that knowledge, that's that's how we get these cops that kill people so so fast. Cause they don't know us. They're not in our communities. They don't, they don't see how we talk. Yeah. But because I've been in it, I understand that sometimes, okay, this is just a different level of passion. Mm. This isn't anger. This is just him being passionate. Yeah. But I feel like for those who don't, who who can't understand it, who have who doesn't have the education, then they will be judgmental. Yeah. Right? That's why I guess I'm challenging it. Like, I don't think there's nothing wrong with having the knowledge as long as you teach them that 
you don't have like we do come from kings and queens. Do you know that niggas was is king? It's exactly. not spelled N I G G A A. It's, it's spelled N I G U S. You get what I'm saying? Like, and then what happened was, uh, I don't know. Christopher Columbus came over here. He he named it when he was wrong. You know what I'm saying? Like they kept captured us to be slaves, but that wasn't how it was supposed to be. We yeah. was kings before that. Hundred percent. I feel like the school starts at slavery, so we can teach them slavery, but yeah. it, it don't it don't it never started there. Right. If that makes sense. No, 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 for sure. So it's just that I'm not yeah. saying. Yeah, I love your your thought process. I'm just like yeah, maybe there's sure. another way to. 100%, bro. And I know a lot of us, we just care too, mi- too much anger. I guess yeah. that's what it is. Facts. Like, it brings out anger in us because that's what they show. Mm. They show vivid rape, vivid hanging, vivid this, mm. that subconsciously put us down and we saying we're, we're not better than them. Mm. That's our people's... They, if they don't say it out loud, they thinking it. It's we're cute. not better than them. They are better than us, and they still think like that today. Yeah. But I will walk up and say, "Yo, I'm, give me, give me a couple, give me a couple years." I mm. walk up to Jeff Bezos, give me a couple years. I'm gonna smoke your numbers. I promise you. You know mm. what I'm saying? With all confidence, because I'm not letting the color hold me back. Like mm. this is our our biggest disadvantage is our advantage. God made us different for a reason. You know what I'm saying? We are really the chosen people if they want to get down to it. But you know what I'm saying? Like we're different. We got to use our disadvantages to our advantages and say, "Oh, I'm gonna take over." Mm. Nobody didn't expect this little black dude to slide out there in the hood, come Nobody. out here and do 32 million in six years. They wasn't even planning on me even doing this. They mm. looked at the background, like he ain't gonna, and now boom. And I tell people, ain't nobody, I used to think, just like everybody else, oh, if I get too big, they gonna clip my wing. Ain't nobody give a damn. You ain't really nobody until you pass a couple hundred million, for real. Mm. You fly under the radar than any other thing, because I'm looking at 10 million, <laughs> 20 million, 100, you know, 30 million. Ain't nobody looking at nowhere. You know what I'm saying? Like, if anything, you get accepted more into a different society and you let them know mm. more about who you are as a person. That's so true. I, I, and and I, people criticize me, not criticize me, but like, I guess some people who say that they don't believe in it, but like me, it would be ignorance for me to say racism isn't real. Yeah. However, I understand that it's real, but I think the the biggest um, destruction in our country is, is classism. 100%. I, like, I think if you black, but if you rich, you sit at the table. You good. They, you even good. if they racist, they don't give a damn. Like, okay. They, they respect money. So, <laughs> right. so I'm like, I don't give a damn what you say about me when you're asleep or you talking to your wife or whatever. What I care about is what you present to me when I see you. Yep. If that that's respect to me. Mm-hmm. If you can hold your tongue and talk, because you know, we're gonna joke on whoever we joke on. Mm-hmm. So you know what I'm saying? Like, whatever you do is whatever you do. Mm-hmm. I don't care. But when we're in front of each other, it's different. That's why I say most of that racism shit is in poverty stricken areas, the yeah. trailer parks. That's who damn over here calling us but, niggas. But guess what? <laughs> on some real shit, them white, them white people don't give a damn about them poor white people either. Exactly. That's, poor is poor. poor they is, don't want to be around poor, period. That's a fact. Ain't, no, ain't nothing about no color means nothing. Like, just like we don't want to be in the hood no more because niggas get down certain ways. Mm-hmm. I ain't walking in the hood with all this shit on. Mm. I know what type of wolves out there was. I was out there. So I know, oh shit, I already know what to stay away from. Mm. So we all try to get away from whatever we consider is lower than what we are actually currently at right now mm. in life. Let me ask you this then. Come Since on. we having this conversation, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be real with you, right? Let's so, do it. I, I love this conversation. So, All so, real shit. So you're getting into some music, right? Yeah. You just came here. you like, <laughs> I got the feature with da-da-da, da-da-da, da-da-da. Yeah. I mean, but come on, bro. Like, who you fooling, man? You could pay for these features. 100%. But it's a difference for paying for things because I can. Yeah. But people seeing me come up. Mm. I want to talk about that a little bit. Come on, let's do it. Because I feel like... Have you? Well, I guess I'm gonna just start the conversation. How is the music going? Honestly, like, is it is it on, on the music fire? Like, just hearing all the execs or whatever the case is. Like, they keeping it real with me because I know a lot of people. They keeping it real with me, letting me know, yo, you don't want to be in this record deal, bro. Da, 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 da. Like, you gonna have to pay this back. Da, da, da. You too bigger than that. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Da, da. You might as well push this. Da, da. So the music is fire. I think I work with all my favorite artists, and it started from me trying to go live, play music to turn up, mm-hmm. and I hit get hit with a copyright infringement. So I said, fuck that. I'm going to spend at least a half a million dollars in the span of four months on everybody that I love music currently today, and I'm going to do a feature with them. Do you think that's going to get you a genuine crowd, though? It's going to get me a crowd to peek in. I need curiosity. Remember what I told you before? All I want is curiosity. They're going to hear it, and I'm going to bring them in on that shit. I already know. It's edutainment. You entertain somebody, and you got to educate them at the same time. I'm going to pull you in. You're going to hear this shit I'm talking about because you're going to realize that nothing I ever rapped about, I lied about. Mm. I'm rapping about a lifestyle that I currently live, the cars that I currently drive. The, you know what I'm saying? Everything, I, I'm like, yo, stop me when I lied. Mo- most of my tracks, I say that. No, no exaggeration and fabrication. Everything I did, you might, you question that rapper before you question me. Because mm. everything I did is right here in front of y'all. Y'all done seen this shit. Y'all know I'm my own self-made boss. And I, even when the rappers, they're like, nigga, you got to put me down. You know, because they realize 
this is ultimate respect. It ain't yeah. being an athlete. It ain't being a, a rapper. It ain't being no actor. It's being an entrepreneur. We're the most respected people out here. Mm. Like after seeing, you know, <clears throat> you know, the people go out there. Oh, who was it? Was it Russell? Ru Russell, what, Russell Westbrook, I think. Like when they threw like all types of cans at them when they was coming out of the, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm like, yeah. that's crazy to me. Mm. These are multi-millionaires, but they're multi-millionaires and not getting the respect they deserve based off of them getting a check cut by a certain organization. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I only ask that because like, you know, like, and that, of, of course, it's just funny because it kind of go back to our conversation about being exposed to poverty and, and like your subconscious mind being attracted yeah. to that. A lot of the rappers that we like, yeah. we like them because they come from a certain place, right? We hit a hood, the struggle and shit like that. Yeah. So when when you see a rapper who who's just getting into rap and you ain't really see him struggle, like you just see the money, 100%. it's hard for me to, as a consumer, like, mm, I'll listen to that. Like, that's that's what you first think because 100%. we attracted to the struggle. 100%, you know, and you got those rappers, you know, it, it's it's different type of rap for everybody. You know what I'm saying? I believe is what's dope is them seeing a journey off site, and then when they hear it, they're gonna associate it with whatever they associate it with, and then they're gonna tap into the story like, oh damn, you know what I'm saying? Like when they see, I'm like, like even one of my raps, I was like, yo, I was just back in the hood, and I swear that the struggle was real. Shit gave me chills. You know what I'm saying? Like just going back and you know, I almost got killed. This was surreal. Now I'm just thinking expansion dimensions. I got in the hills. Watch how I spill. You know what I'm saying? I'm just going through what it was to where it's at now, where it was to where it's at now. This is now. This is how you get there. You know, even telling people focus. All you really got to do is focus, lay back and let your mind open, and then apply pressure. Go with your stomach. Never second guess it. Like, I'm giving the game in there as well as I'm talking the shit. Mm -hmm. So they hearing both sides of it. Got a song, Thug's Dream. I wrote that shit in poverty. Made everything come true. You know what I'm saying? And that's what they relating to. They're like, damn, this nigga actually did it. But you got all this money. <clears throat> Why are you going to be in rap? It ain't um, just because you going on IG Live and oh, no. it. It's, 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 I'm grabbing the I'm grabbing an audience that I believe needs to be reached. You know, because <clears throat> people will know a rap song back, front to back, but they don't know shit about financial liter literacy at all. Mm. They don't know how to balance a checkbook or nothing. You know what I'm saying? But they know a rap song back to back. And so, I know that's what entices people. That's why I dress the way I dress, look the way I look, because I know that what brings our people in, that riper lifestyle. You know what I'm saying? But I know for a fact, if you can look like them, but talk a whole different game, you reach a whole different type of people. Because mm. I got an extensive you know, network now where I can just market to the people who got the money. You know what I'm saying? Like when I when I was like, yo, a ten thousand to a million dollars, you know what I'm saying, tapping with me, text this number right here. I get plenty of people to do that because a lot of people got money. I go after everybody though, because I'm trying to type I'm trying to get to the person that was where I was. I love mm. music. You know what mm. I'm saying? I was in those struggles of knowing every song. So I'm going after the young me. Come mm. over here. You know what I'm saying? Or the me who just listening to that and focusing on that. I'm gonna bring you over here, get you interested in this money, put you down, change the game. So it's basically another way to market. That's it. Everything is marketing. I won't post nothing if I'm not marketing. I don't care what I'm talking about. I got a hint of marketing in there that's going to lead them to whatever I want. I've been talking heavy about relationships because I'm coming out with a billion-dollar date nap soon with a powerful woman that's everybody's favorite woman right now. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. we working on that thing to come into fruition in 2025. So I'm talking heavy about dating because, you know what I'm saying, or what women need to be looking for because... It's a play for the over. It's an underplay for the overplay. I've been telling, trying to tell people I don't do shit for no reason. If mm. I'm gonna talk about it, every word need to be intentional out your mouth. Mm. Never waste a second. Mm. That's real. Yo, do you think? Um, I mean, shit. It seems like you got it going on, but post pandemic, is it even hard for you? Uh, post pandemic, um, it's you see a shift. You definitely see a shift, but you see shift in people getting what they want. But I'm saying you personally, is it? Is it? Because I mean, it seems like you got this shit still going on. But oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, is it? Because I'm assuming during pandemic you was making a, a a lot of money. You know what I'm saying? Oh yeah, pandemic was it, it was crazy. Good thing I started in 2018 to see the real power of my business. Most people couldn't see the real power of their business because they started in the pandemic. Mm. So you don't know if you got a winner or not, or you just was in an area where everybody had money that was that's haven't happened in the last 30, 40 years. Okay. So. I got to see, I made a lot a lot of that money in the first two years of business before the pandemic happened. Mm. Obviously, pandemic happened, million dollar days, you know, seven figure months. You know what I'm saying? Is it harder now though? Like just curious. No, it's um it's shifted. So now it's just a pivot into what people really want, right? It's a certain price point people really want. It's a certain advertisement that people really want. It's always a way around everything because people are still becoming billionaires in this time. Selena Gomez just came a billionaire from beauty products. Mm. Rihanna. Billionaire beauty products, Kim Kardashian, million, and billion a billion dollars supposed to have been fucking almost impossible to achieve. 
That's why they celebrate the billionaires. But these women are doing it in less than five to 10 years because mm -hmm. of COVID. COVID actually helped things out now because everybody is buying everything online. You just got to find out what are the right things to sell online now to move Nuva to the point where you can still have a lot of success. What's some of the, um, what you think the best thing is it? What, I mean, of course you do skincare, but like what's the top five things to sell online right now, you think? Skincare, health, um, healthcare, health and wellness, fitness, you know what I'm saying? And I get into the specifics inside the, um, my, my certain programs or whatever, but those industries will never go nowhere. People are more conscious now. Mm. Like, and that's the great thing about it. COVID helped a lot because now people are conscious about the shit that we should have been conscious about. Mm. Like people care about their weight now. They went, you know what I'm saying, before, before, like, whatever, you know what I'm saying? Like, we were celebrating all types of BBWs and everything. Like, it was, it was good. We, we, we like thick women. But, you know what I'm saying? Like, it wasn't as, you know, uh, health conscious as today. Because now we realize that a lot of people that was unhealthy, they was out of here. Mm. They couldn't handle being sick or whatever the case is. You know what I'm saying? Because whatever complications they had before. So now more people on their shit, they more conscious about everything. Health, wealth. Fitness, you know what I'm saying? And beauty. Beauty never went nowhere. If you had to start over today, you got $300. How would you do it to make a million dollars? I got you. Um, You want the real answer or you want the um the No, nah, I don't the want the that answer. shit. No, nah, man, I want the real shit. So, so somebody can look at this and they can really apply. It's on some, like, I don't want a bunch of you. these entrepreneurs to be giving a bunch of game and just bullshit. Give me some you. real shit. All right, this is exactly what I would do. I ain't lying to y'all. This is exactly what I would do. Me, I would do. All right? I would do this shit too. I would go to Dollar Tree. I would go to Dollar Tree. I will go rip those labels off. You know what I'm saying? If I can't rip the labels off or whatever the case is, I'm going to go to Uline, go get, you know, box of jars, 36 jars for like uh, what it is. Um, they got the net pay so you don't have to pay it right then and there. Um, go get a box of jars and put the products, um, everything that was inside those products into that jar. Now I'm selling it for my own. So now the product, that costs $1. I'm selling it for $30, $40. You know, I'm putting it on here. I'm putting it on eBay. I'm putting it on Facebook Marketplace. I'm putting it on Instagram. You know what I'm saying? And I'm going to go look for all the cheap influencers to work with or whatever the case is. I'm going on all the free groups. Oh, my God, this is crazy. This this stuff works like a people going to tap in. People going to look at it. People going to say, because the micro influencers, the people that's actually winning now, the people that don't really got a name like that, but people trust the people that they don't know. You know what I'm saying? That's just how it goes now. That's exactly what I would do. I'm taking those little cheap products I can go get today, looking at what people love on those shelves, putting it in my own jar, putting the same ingredients on there. Because when I buy it, it's mine, right? Mm. Like, shit, you throw away the jar anyway. When you use it, that's yours. However you use it is how you use it. I'm using it to sell it to somebody else. And I'm going to sell it for shit to more money than I paid for it. Because mm. the world is already used to paying high prices for a lot of things anyways. You know what I'm saying? So I'm going to go get this right here. Bust that down, sell it for $40, $50, somebody going to buy it. And I'm going to just do that over and over and over and over. That's what I would do with $300. That got to be illegal, though. That's what I would do. Because how? You using it, you bought the product. That's your product now. You know what I'm saying? You use it on your skin or giving it to somebody else to use it on their skin or whatever the case is, is there. That's just what I would do. Mm. If I'm telling people in today's time, instead of ordering products from overseas or whatever the case is, that I don't know what's in it or whatever, got to do the whole research thing. I ain't got no time to research. You said I got $300. Yeah. You said I got $300. That's already FDA approved. So, you know what I'm saying? Like, whatever, my logo, my logo, my name now. And that's private labeling. Half the time these companies have their products for private label. You know what I'm saying? Where you can just put your own name on that, whatever the case is. That's only if you want to skip the skeps or whatever I'm saying. But you can literally go and, you know, go on their website and see if they offer private labeling for their products. Because mm. nine times out of ten, they get it from a factory. They might be over here. And you literally go to the factory, go get the same thing. You might not get the same price points, but. So I'm going to sell a product that costs a dollar for $50. Yeah. People do that all the time. Think about it. Louis Vuitton jacket. How much you think they really. Like $100, if that. Come on. <laughs> but I'm over here paying $15,000, 20000 mm. I respect it. This somebody last name. I know their story. You know, I know Louis Vuitton's story is amazing. You know what I'm saying? Then his son, George Vuitton, picked up the business, took that shit global. And then his two sons came out here and made that thing international. You know what I'm saying? So it's a legacy business. It's a legacy brand. I support it because I love the legacy story of it. Just like I drive a Rolls Royce. Charles Royce, Henry, um, Charles Rolls, Henry Royce. Two dudes that came together. Different paths. This dude was poor as hell, had to stop working at four years. I mean, he had to, he had to go, go to work literally in the fourth grade to provide for the family because he was the man in the household then. Mm -hmm. This other dude came from privilege or whatever the case is. He liked fast cars. This boy started working on engines or whatever the case is. He loved fast cars. They came together and created the best vehicle in the world. I just love stories. So I support what I believe in because that's the type of story shit that I'm into. But back to the jacket, bro, confidence sold this jacket. Mm -hmm. They said, yo, that's my price. You don't want it. Fuck off. Get out mm -hmm. my store. This is what I'm worth. What you worth? If you a $100 nigga, go get a $100 jacket. If you're a $20,000 dude, 
You know, like when I paid two hundred thousand dollars for 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 a flight to talk to you know a mentor, pick his head, and needed two things. I didn't need a whole set. I just needed two answers that I was been looking for. I got those two answers. Now I'm making plays in the right mindset based off of two answers. But I didn't pay two hundred thousand because it was, I paid two hundred thousand because it showed me my value. Mm. I can charge you two hundred thousand because that's what I paid. You know what I'm saying? If I drop this much in this, I can charge you that because that's how much I pay. It shows that I'm a valuable customer. I tell people all the time, why would you want my program for free? And I'm teaching you how to sell expensive products to people. Mm -hmm. If you ain't willing to pay it for yourself, why would you charge somebody else that? That mm -hmm. makes no sense. Damn. This is good, bro. <laughs> Shit, did we miss anything? <laughs> I don't think we did, bro. How you feel about the 50-50 conversation? Um... Again, man, I came up, when I was coming up, I thought like not paying 100 was going to alleviate all my problems, and that's not true. Okay. I think as a man, I definitely want to uh, take care of my woman. Okay. Or I want to provide for my family. But at the end of the day, I think um, it's always going to be 50-50. Depends in on some how you way, look at in it. In some, in some cases. Yeah, I feel sure. like, I mean, it depends what, how how much you want to expand your brain. Because if it's not 50-50, I don't want it anyway, depending on how you're expanding your brain. Because 50-50 ain't always money. Right. You know what I'm trying to say? Like, because if I'm paying all the bills and you're making it easy for me, that, mu that might be that's 75 priceless. for me. <laughs> like, well, that's priceless. You feel me? Like, that's worth it. <clears throat> yeah. You know what I'm trying to say? A now, peace of mind. Now, if I don't have it, you get what I'm trying to say? I don't think nobody should go out there and struggle and... I don't think somebody should go out there, struggle to be able to pay all of somebody else's bills. Mm -hmm. One. Two, what I learned coming up is... If, it's, if you're going to pay all the bills, it should be on your terms. And what I mean by that is, if you have a spot, like you said, you showed up, Section 8, this is what I'm paying for. This yeah. is what I can afford. Yeah. If you're okay with this, then you could come. Yeah. And then I, I'm paying my bills anyway, right? Yeah. I think what happens is, when we talk about this 50-50, we try to live above our means and pay all that, and then we put ourselves 10 steps back. 100%, you know what I'm trying to say? 100%. You, suppose that you should be able to get something that you can afford. And she, and she, hopefully she will be okay with that. Yeah. Now she's not okay with that. Now it was like y'all can make y'all can say have a conversation and be like, yo, I can afford. I don't know. Let's say two thousand dollars. If she want an apartment that's three thousand dollars, you bring up the extra thousand. That's how I look at it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Now I, I bring you in. I'm paying a hundred percent of the bills on my terms. Yeah. If that makes sense. Yeah. That's and the woman needs to be following it anyways, bro. So like, that's why I always say, man, when it comes to this conversation, I normally say, yo, I don't believe that men should be struggling trying to pay a woman's bills, right? I believe, yo. Prepare to be with a woman. So that means get ready to set certain standards. Mm -hmm. But you have to have something to set. You know what I'm saying? I don't believe the relationship map is if you can't barely take care of yourself, you damn sure can't take care of a woman. Mm. Don't put her through the damn same struggle. Y'all gonna have struggle ass children and now they gotta go through the damn struggle. Stop bringing up struggle ass families. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Stay by your damn self. Hustle your ass off because we already know men can make way more money by themselves than they can be in the relationship. Million percent. You can be a damn millionaire out here if we leave women alone for like five years or whatever. The case yeah, is. Yeah. Like, we just know the truth. So, use the time of you not being in a relationship. Make that obviously clear to, clear to the person who you're dealing with or whatever. Like, yo, I ain't looking for none of da. I'm just here to da. She agree. Whatever the case is. We know things are right, but it's like, yo, or just stay by yourself. You know what I'm saying? Seem retention. Practice that. Get your mindset right. Whatever the case is. Start focusing on your craft. I was single for two years until I said, I'm ready. Mm. That's when I took a woman serious. That's when I said, okay, this is what I'm doing. Da, 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 da. Let me look at your bills. We're going to dissolve that because a man should never move in with a woman. Never. Mm -hmm. Don't do that. Because mm -hmm. now you're going to set the, you're gonna set off the natural balance of things. Yeah. Now she's going to come in the house talking to you like you crazy. Mm -hmm. Like you the little girl. Because now she's operating in more of a masculine. Because you have just laid in her dwellings. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Don't be a couch surfer. You got to have a foundation. Mm -hmm. Baby girl, come over here. And even if you do want a $3,000 apartment, we'll get there eventually. Come over here in this $2,000 joint. Mm -hmm. You follow me? Are you going to follow me? Oh, you is? Come on, now that's the woman that you know for a fact that's going to be down for you. Because mm. you stepping in there like no other man has. Mm. There's other man that say, nah, I love 50-50. 50, 50, 50, 50, man, listen, I tell people all the time, and this is what I really believe. Keep your options open. Mm. Keep your options open. You know what I'm saying? Like, if this dude ain't willing to prepare, you know, provide a certain life that you desire, same vice versa. Keep your options open. Mm. If you're going to talk to me like I'm crazy, you know what I'm saying, and you ain't going to respect me as a man, my options open. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Because all I want is what I want. So I, I guess <clears throat> my question is, I just think, because I know better, I, and I, I, don't, I don't know, I'm going to ask you. Yeah. When you say if he's not willing to provide for you a different type of lifestyle, is that now or just in general? 
that's in general for us everything when it comes to what I mean by different lifestyle, right? You got dudes that's not even talking about their future with their woman. Mm. There's dudes that not even trying to plan on being nothing with their woman. Yeah. I see it all day long. I, I, I like that. You, I'm you know that. what I'm saying? So they sitting over here not even fantasizing about what life could be. For they sure. just on the couch playing the game every day, living a mundane ass life. And you 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 expect that woman to be okay with that? Yeah, you nah, know what I'm saying? Sure. Like like but so I guess you get the left. wording though is hard. This because if I'm not that nigga, you like man for nigga. Like if I can't provide that right now. That's what a lot of people, and I guess that's, that's oh, marketing. But, but why, why they can't, though? Because think about it. It's dudes that make $30,000, $40,000 a year taking care of their woman. Mm. I know plenty of them. You know what I'm saying? They woman laying in their dwellings or whatever the case is. They make the bills work, whatever. They know how to save money when it's time to save money. People got money for whatever the hell they want. Mm. You want that Cadillac Escalade, they're going to get it. You know what I'm saying? Like, you, you, you want Beyonce, to, you're going you gonna to pay $1,000 to go see Chris Brown. Mm. These niggas, they ain't got no money, quote unquote. Mm-hmm. But you got money for what you want. So you do have money to provide for a relationship and, and do what you need to do. You just don't want to. Mm. Just say that. You know what I'm saying? Don't make it seem like you can't. Talk about today's economy. Nah, you let a move, move, woman move in with you. You look at the bills. You see what makes sense to take on and what makes sense to dissolve. You know mm. what I'm saying? And if she ain't with that, and you ain't like and dissolve no damn dire shit, obviously. It's some things that it's like, you know, you don't need this right here. Okay, you know what I'm saying? You don't need this right here. Let's cut this off right here. Da, da, da. We do this. Right. We good right here. You know what I'm saying? So that's an extreme way of thinking. What about the way that's like, if, I don't know, every woman not going to be like, let's dissolve it. Oh, I want, I want some of these things. Okay, so if you want some of these things, then you can pay for some of these things. If, if it's a necessary, if that's the person that you try to be with or whatever the case is, and like, let's say... I always they need to have they, they hygiene and shit good. Yeah, you know sure. what I'm saying? Yeah. Hair, nails, I believe all that's the key because we'll go get haircuts. Mm-hmm. I want my woman to look busted as hell next to me, whatever. Now that bring my property value down. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. she looking crazy. Nah, okay, we're going to make sure that we our appearance is up. That's yeah. important. You know what I'm saying? Lifestyles, that can be managed because mm-hmm. we can get to the point where we can afford whatever the fuck we want. You know what I'm saying? But if you got a high-ass car note or whatever the case is and you ain't working, you don't need that car right now. I got a nice, I got a nice cool look, you know what I'm saying? We'll do this until we can get better till we can buy that shit out right. Mm. We're gonna do this thing right, you know, a right way. A woman will listen to a real leader as a man, but most of these dudes are not real leaders because they never came from real leaders. Mm. Most of the dudes that argue with me on this 50-50 conversation come from single mothers. Mm. And, and I asked this dude on live, we going back and forth for an hour. Hell nah, women need to be doing this and that. Women need to know. I'm saying, listen, where you come from? You come from a two-parent household? Nah, a single mother. Okay, would you wish that somebody came in there? How, what she did? I, she did everything for me. Would you wish another man came in there and took off those stresses from her, doing everything for you when you know she was struggling, trying to be there for you, make, big, make all your games, and take care of all the bills and shit? He said, yeah, I would. Yeah, I don't have no issue with, like, men. I mean, I think, to be honest, I think men should provide. Like, I don't... I just, that's my natural. Only, yeah, that's yeah, not natural, bro. There's no argument to that. <laughs> I think my only frustration the argument is when women come in with the, like, entitlement of, like... That's why I'm scared to, like... Like you said, men can get rich by themselves so much faster than have been in a relationship. The yeah. scary part about that is, like, do I want a woman who wants me for the thing for, for the things that I have or for who I am? I think you definitely should want both, right? You want to be with a woman who wants you for the things you have as well because every woman wants, wants security. Every woman. I don't care who she is. Ain't no woman out here talking, nah, I'm good. I take care of everything. I want, I just want a nigga to love. No, they want security. They want a dude that's out there handling business for them because guess what? In the time of pregnancy, when she got to take off work, what's she doing? She's struggling or is she going to be good because you're taking care of her? You know what I'm saying? Security is something that they want naturally. Yeah, Because sure. we was naturally made like that. Men, hunters. Women, they cooking the stuff. They That's the security of, you know what I'm saying? Like, you do that mm. and I'm going to do this. You know mm. what I'm saying? And that's how it was. So I believe men need to be looking for both. You 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 want me to have the bag, right? You want me to have or be seeking the bag and go get the bag for us, right? Yes. Okay, cool. You want, you know what I'm saying? You want me for me too, right? I love I love who you are, but I want this as well. That's absolutely fine. Cause we can have the same standards. Mm. It's just that men don't got no damn standards these days. Yeah, we just say, yo, you look good or whatever the case is. Nah, that you gotta have more than that shit. I'm not looking at nothing that just look good. What's your brain like? How far can you take me mentally? How good are you spiritually with yourself where you can actually help me with myself? Mm. Cause I'm a whole story to unpack. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And as a king, especially if you bossing up or whatever the case is, you get into that level, you need a woman that's that they can be with be there with you, you know what I'm saying? Mindset wise. Like, okay, nah, oh, she on the same page as me mentally. We hear, we hear. She knows exactly what to do in that moment when she see you frustrated. Mm. You at an event, come here, baby. You know what I'm saying? Real quick. Now you back at it. Mm. You request those things from women. Have something other than look at other than sex. 
Sex is for poor people. Mm. I truly believe that shit. You know what I'm saying? Because that's the only thing poor people think about. And it's free. Mm. That's why they do it so much. You look at the poverty-stricken neighborhoods, three to seven kids. Look at the middle class, two to three kids. Look at the rich class, one or two kids. That's normally how it goes. You know what I'm saying? Because people only prioritizing all day to have sex because they got all the time in the world. Middle class people, they out here trying to hustle and bustle so they don't go back poor or so they can hopefully one day become successful. So two or three kids, max, they got to hurry up and stay in this little hustle and bustle mode. Rich people, they normally only having one or two kids based off of their level of life, you know what I'm saying, that they want to live. We want to travel. We want to do a snap, but we want to have one or two kids just to keep the legacy going. You know what I'm saying? That's normally how it goes. Mm. Yeah, man. Nah, I'm with you, dog. I think niggas need to get up here on their feet and get to it. Yeah. This shit, this shit was good, bro. Yeah, This shit was good, bro. For the niggas that don't know, let them know how to follow you, how to uh, tap into the programs and all that. Got you. Listen, Poppy Chulo underscore dreaded. It's the account with 1.8 million followers. High limit, y'all. I got something for every class I was at. You know what I'm saying? I got a $35 monthly program. Unlimited access to all my content on how to start and grow a successful business step by step. You can get that link in the bio right there. I got a $5,000 program. That's the little next step up. If you want me to teach you exactly what to sell and how to sell it, it's there as well. Just DM me for that one. Or if you want to get my $10,000 to my million dollar situation where you're sitting down with me in person. And the million dollars is a 50 50 business partnership with me. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So I, didn't, and I ain't touch a brand yet that ain't made over six, seven, and eight figures. So. You know, you know what that is. It started two hundred fifty thousand on up, but ten thousand plus. You sit down with me, I build a business for you. You can just text me at eight one three three six five eight two seven two about that, man. You know, appreciate mm. you, bro. This is good, bro. My God, Keenan. Come on, Poppy Chulo, man. Mr. J Hill, J Hill Podcast is right. We out. Yeah. <laughs>